So I'm Yuko Yokozawa. I graduated from uh, University of Redlands MSGIS program this August. And I'm going to present to you about this uh, project I've done in my class. The objective of this project is to create the seafloor image map from an uh, underwater video. So the seafloor image, I think this is the seafloor image you've seen like regularly. And this is not the real image, this is a computer model. So what I want to create is using this type of image into this mapping, you know, the map format. So put this image into this uh, ocean seafloor image. That's what I want to do. That's like an aerial photo, right, in, on a land. And let's think about the aerial photo. How are we going to make it? It's like, uh, like, you know, using drone and then taking multiple photos of the area and then put them together to, into the, this also image, like 2D image, using the technology called, called uh, uh, photogrammetry. And this photogrammetry uh, technology, how they do it, they create these control points in uh, multiple photos. That means the image has to be over each other. And this more overlap creates more control points. And that creates better 2D image and then also uh, the 3D products. So can we use this technology integrate into the C4 image? Um, he, let's think about the difference between air and the water. What's the challenge in the water is there's low light, not much. You know, lights penetrate through water, and then also low visibility. We can't really see, you know, far from like distance, like miles away. We can't do that. And then also, because I want to create that map, I need the location data. But GPS signal cannot penetrate through water. So we need to use some other different system, like acoustic positioning system type of stuff. And then lastly, the most important thing is the density. The water is very dense, and uh, it keeps moving. So it you know, push you around. Think about the drone. They like, take a photo, like hover in one place, and then take a photo, and then move to the next exact location to have uh, enough overlap, and then take a photo again, uh, doing the same thing again and again. But in the water, can you do that? Like, you know, water keep pushing around. You, you want to take a photo in the next place, but you already moved like this, and then you have no overlap. So I thought about this, and then I thought, you know, the video is a more, you know, suitable for underwater mapping, because it's continuous data. It, even if going, like, go sideways, it's still taking a, uh, the video. So this is more optimal for underwater mapping. So seafloor video, is there a seafloor video existed? Well, yes, uh, there's a company called the Marine Applied Research and Exploration. They are specialized in uh, ROV seafloor mapping. I mean, not mapping, seafloor video taking. They use ROV to take a seafloor video. And then, so they have done it quite a long time, so they already have a uh, the tons of videos, and then the most important thing is these video already associate with the position data and then also their sensor data. So I thought this is a, a you know perfect data for me. So I asked them to use their video, and then they said yes. So since they're using ROV, I'm going to talk about a little bit about their particular ROV. I think you know everybody knows about what the ROV is. So they use ROV called the Vigo. And it's at about 450 pounds. It's a mid-size, middle-size uh, ROV. They go down up to 1,000 meters. And this ROV equipped with many cameras and video cameras, like forward and then down and a rear video camera. And then they also have a stereo cameras. And because of its size, they need a like, bigger board, and then also multiple people required to handle this vehicle. During the, their survey, they fly about one to two meters above bottom, and then they go slow, very slow, constant speed. That's because their purpose of this video was a biological survey. They take this 
video back to the office, and then somebody's going to look, look at the video, and then ID and like count, the, count, and then also sometimes size the organisms like a fish and an invertebrate. So the purpose of this video was a little different than uh, my purpose, but it's good enough because it's pretty slow and then you know, it creates your vision in the monitor. So once I get the data, now I have to prepare the data, I mean the video. And first, I have to look through the video to find the different ocean conditions. That's because, you know, you see these two photos. One is very light and the other one is very dark. So, you know, I thought I can compare the result using these conditions later. So I just, you know, finding the sections of the video. And then also, then after that, I create the short video clips, about one to two minutes. And then, because these videos are not uh, geocoded, they um, keep the position data in a separate database. So I have to extract the position data corresponding correspond to these video clips. So once I have done everything, I'm ready to run the software, the photogrammetry software. So you know the software is gonna extract the frame images from the video. It's that's because you know the video is a bunch of images put them together to create the uh, motion. So it's not the difficult thing to do. And then after software uh, extracts the image, the, uh, it geocode each image using my, the data I provided. And for this extraction, I did several experiments, and then I found that if I extract the image every one second, uh, each image has enough overlap. And my video is one second means 30 frames. So this is up to your video. If you want to do the same thing, you have to check the frame rates of your video. It's up to your data. So now I finish running the software to get this, uh, the final product. And I'm going to show you my best image. This is the image, uh, also image, you know, 2D, uh, from the video. Uh, about tip to tip is about 100 meters. And then it was created from one minute and 30 seconds video clip. It was taken in uh, Carmel Bay, California, and in a very good day. So depth was about 35 to 37 meters, very good visibility, and then lots of light. And, you know, because this is a, this is a map, so you know you can put this in your in your ArcGIS Arc map, and you can do whatever you want to do. It, you know analysis on it. You can measure stuff. Do whatever you want. This is again. This is not a photo or just an image. This is a map, and I, I'm going to show you the blow up. Here now you can see like anemones and a ripple of sands, and even you can see the grain of the sands. You can see it in your map. So I'm going to show you the original video I created for, you know, I create this image from and using ArcMap extension called a full motion video. And this is ArcMap view and then Monterey Peninsula and then a little bit down south is the Carmel Bay where the video was taken. And I put also this uh, bathymetry file. I think, you know, all of you have used this data before as an oceanographer or a scientist, because you know, this is like probably the only data we can use for this you know, seafloor. And then you can see a pretty good idea of where the rock is or sand is. And then this blue little thing is my data, my image. It's tiny, only 100 meters sense, but you, you know, compared with this bathymetry data, it's totally different. Now I grow up into this image, and you know, using this FMV, you can put the, uh, this original video into this image. And then, because this is a map, this image is a map, I can show you where the, the video was taken. And now you see this little blue uh, triangle coming in. This is where the ROV was when, while this uh, video was taken. So you can see it, and then the, the image is a little bit ahead of this triangle, so you can see where it is. And you see a little orange part of the image, right? That's where the ROV lights hit on the, on the rock. 
So it's more like this color, this orangey color is more like a natural color of this old stuff on top of rock and then also rock itself. So when ROV is going like over the rock, like this, and now going over. And so right now, ROV is flying kind of a little bit higher than the usual altitude. So everything becomes blue because the light doesn't really hit anywhere. But you know, this is a very clear day. You can see everything. You can see like anemones on top of rock and stuff, you know, that's, that's still sand and everything. You can even see these sponges on the left side of the rock. Yeah, right here. So that's it. So now I'm going into the 3D products. This is a 3D product the software creates. And top one is DSM, digital surface model. And then down one is 3D image. I just put the 2D image on top of the DSM. But you know, this image is really good, but it's kind of hard to see it. So I create the animation. So in this, this is a 3D image. And you can see like all the sand and like, you know, these anemones on the rock. You can see what's going on on top of the rock. And then, you know, you see all the like sand ripples and then sand bumps. And then sometimes the, the rock sticking out from the, from the sand and everything. And you can also go around the rock and then see, see what's going on like this. You can just go, you know, going around like this. And if you feel like, oh, I want to see the behind the rock, let's go into the behind the rock. You can do it. It's not video, so you can do whatever you want. See, you can see there's something growing on top of the rock, and the between the rock, too. And see these sponges, just like a video. But it's not a video. So this is, again, this is a map, so you can do whatever you want. You can do analysis on it. And then, you know, think about the VR, like virtual reality. You can project into right here, and then you can walk around, and then look around, measure stuff, you know, see the difference between two stuff, whatever you want. I think this is like a future of oceanography, like ocean, ocean science stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, the conclusion. So, you know, at the beginning, I thought, you know, I want to put this image on top of the, the ocean floor image, and I did it. So, it's possible. You can map stuff like this and create the 3D stuff, too. So, that's our like, future, where to go, right? All right, so uh, I'd like to thank my uh, uh, professors and staff in the university. Without them, I couldn't even finish the project. And then, the, especially the Rujima, Dr. Rujima, he's the one who came up with this idea. And then also Marine Applied Research and Exploration. Without them, I couldn't start the project. All right, thank you for listening to my presentation. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you have a question. Great job, Yuko. <laughs> Uh, we have any questions for her? I'm sure we're going to have some people asking about full motion video underwater and how she did all this. Anybody have any questions for her? Sorry. No, you're good. Hi, your presentation was so like interesting and cool, and I'm really new to drone stuff, mm -hmm. and I just learned about Arc Pro in the workshop yesterday, so I don't know much about that either. But what tools did you use to make the video into such an accurate map? Well, did, you know, the photogrammetry software, I used the Pix4D, and then the Pix4D creates this 3D product, and I put them into the Arc ArcGIS Pro. And, you know, it was so easy. I just, you know, click several <laughs> buttons and then create the whole uh, 3D image. And then also animation, just a but click button away. So it, 
you can find out pretty easily to use. If you have a 3D data, you can do it. Wow, very cool. Thank you. Yes. Got a few more questions over here. Here, here we go. Hi. Um, Hi. Yes, uh, great presentation. Um, I just had a question. So to be able to map, um, you said it was a very clear uh, day that day. Does it, mm -hmm. it, it, does it have to be clear? Well, you know, from, because of my data not for um, the mapping, and looks like it has to be a pretty good clear day. If it was dark, then probably half of my map was become very dark, and then I couldn't really see anything. So at this point, I need a lot of light. Or if you want to map, like image mapping, do your own stuff, you have to have a really good lighting. So you know you can light stuff to videotape it. You ha you have to see it, and then to see it, you need the lights. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is a great presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so it's just a crazy idea. Uh, with your experience with this tool, I'm wondering if you think this might work. So we use uh, something very similar to a Didson. It's called an Aris to, to basically make images using sound instead of lights, an acoustic system. Mm -hmm. um, do you think that you could use video from something like an Aris from acoustic, uh, acoustic technology to, to do, I, I guess it wouldn't be photogrammetry, <laughs> it would be acousticgrammetry, stitch together still frames and do the, uh, kind of the same thing but with well, a, yeah, you a know, sound the video. Yeah, you know, the still image, like photo, has more accuracy than a video. So, you know, I was thinking about putting them together, but just my data didn't have a, you know, the photo of that place, so I didn't, couldn't need to do it. But, yeah, a video and a photo put them together, I think it's possible. But the acoustic system, that's just, a, you know, like distance, right? Or, you know, that kind of elevation. That's just like a computer model stuff. Might help with this uh, 3D model, you know, the um, DSM part. But I don't know how to, you know, integrate together into this photogrammetry product. Maybe using some other software to put them together in a more accurate data later. It might be possible. It would be definitely interesting. To yeah, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Any more questions from anybody? No? Let's give her another round of applause there. Thank you.